Hi everybody, it's Noreen and we're going to talk to you next today. Um, I'm wearing my classic tee, I'm wearing my favorite one, the one with all the stripes. Uh, you guys might remember seeing it uh, when I made my Ravinia. It's also in my photograph for by Allegro's. I wear this shirt all the time, it's my favorite. Yes, it's made out of rayon spandex which brings its own little challenges. It's made with stripes, also own little challenges. We're gonna talk about those today and some tricks that uh, will help with that. But more than that, they'll help with any uh, fabric you choose or any V-neck that you want to make. So I hope that uh, I can get you sewing some really great V-necks, nice pointy edges and uh, you guys will be sewing them like crazy. I thought the first thing we should do is really talk about the anatomy of the V-neck. Um, I've got three of Love Notion's uh, v-neck patterns here. Uh, one is the laundry day tee, one is the classic tee, and one is the terra tunic. And you can see that each one of these little v's is different. I'm going to call this a fishtail. Um, you'll hear me refer to it that throughout the video. But you can see that each one is a little bit different. Good news is, is that they're all the same in how they go together. The points will just be different but the, how we sew them, how we apply them to the shirt, and all the little techniques that we're gonna talk about, and all the little tricks I'm gonna show you that I use uh, will all be the same. Okay, let's talk about some of the things that I use to get a great neckband. One of the things that I use is a uh, quilting ruler or any kind of a straight edge. Uh, that's why I'm gonna get a nice precise cut on my band that way, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. Obviously, that's gonna go with a rotary cutter. Um, when we're working with stripes, we're going to need a good old-fashioned pair of scissors, nice and sharp. Uh, of course, we all like our little clips. Great for clipping the neckband around, but to sew a really great V-neck, I think the number one thing that you're going to need is good old-fashioned straight pins and plenty of them. Uh, you really have got to get that pinned in there nice and tight and get that held in there to get that nice V going. And the last thing you're going to need is a little scrap piece of interfacing. And this is just uh, a very lightweight iron-on interfacing. Uh, it doesn't need to be very big. I save all my scraps from when I sew other things and I just throw them in a little pile and then this is what I use when I sew my Phoenix. So let's get started. Let's talk stripes. I think they look really great in neckbands. They look uh, professional, they add interest at the top, and I'm going to show you how I cut them so that you get the really nice even stripes. The first thing that I do and that you're going to need to do is I just cut one big long strip of the stripe fabric um, and approximately the width that I'm going to need for my pattern. Um, it's really important that the that we cut on the stripes, and this is where my scissors come in, not on the, um, we can't use a rotary cutter here because it won't be straight. So I just pick a stripe, so I pick a stripe and a stripe, right? And then I just start cutting. And I'm just gonna follow that stripe all the way down to the end. All right, we've cut it all the way to the end. It's nice and even now. Now I'm gonna show you how to decide how wide it's going to be. And you really need your striped piece of fabric to be even on both sides. That's because when we go to sew it together and sew our little V in, we want our stripes to be able to match in the center front. So for this classic tee, if I was going to use this fabric for that, I would put it on here and I can see that I'm gonna go from the black to the black. So I'm actually gonna cut on this black stripe right here, all the way up so that I just have a full piece that way. If I were going to use the laundry day tee, where you can see a little better. That actually, if I put this on the edge of the black, that actually ends on the white. So I would actually shift this over and I would recut this from white to white so that it's even. If you keep your stripes even, then you get nice stripe matching in the front at the point of your V. Now I'm going to show you what I do to get really nice, straight, even neckbands uh, on just regular fabric. This works for a V-neck band. This also works for any band that you want to choose. I just set my pattern down on my piece of fabric, and then I've set my quilting ruler on top. And um, you just kind of adjust that like that. Put your quilting ruler. Now I can really hold down uh, my pattern piece and get a really good, precise cut. And I'll just cut up this side and then I'll flip it over and I'll cut the other side. And you notice I haven't cut the top yet. I've got it out just a little bit longer than that fishtail. And I'm going to show you a little trick I used to cut that out in just a second. So here's my band all cut out using my rotary cutter. And then the next thing I do is I take it and I fold it 
in half. And if your fabric is super slippery, you can do this at your ironing board and go ahead and give it a really good press so that it stays down for you. This is, um, I think this is like a poly spandex and it's behaving pretty well. So I just fold it in half. So the next thing I do is I take my pattern piece and see where the little fishtail is? I'm gonna fold one of these edges over to make a straight line right here. Then I just lay this on my pattern piece, matching up the fold down here. Matching that to right there. Then I put my straight edge on here. Just like that. And then I cut it. And then when I open this up, see? That's a really nice V I've got there. And it's even on both sides. Now that we've got our neckband all cut out nice and neatly, we're gonna sew this together. And the one thing that I do is when I put my pin right here in the middle, I weave it in and out of the fabric several times like that so it is in there nice and firm. It's not going to slip. The other thing it does is it keeps our center marked very accurately. If I just put this pin in like this, it can shift around when I sew and then I'm not going to get as accurate of an effect. So again, I just put it in and weave it in and out several times so it's in nice and firm. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually sew from the inside out. So I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to drop my needle right on the middle where my pin is. Then I'm going to sew this direction. Then I'm going to flip it over, drop my needle in the center again, and sew to the other section. And there we have our, our little fishtail V all sewn in. We have the points are even right down here. Now sometimes you'll notice your fabric start to pull and it kind of stretches. Then if you are able to adjust the pressure of your presser foot, that's a good thing to do. I loosen mine a lot when I'm sewing with knit, so it's not pushing down super hard and distorting the fabric. So if you have a problem with it really pulling, you might wanna see if you can adjust the pressure on your presser foot. Right in here, and we're gonna to cut to the V, but not through those stitches. And then we're gonna take it over to the ironing board and we're gonna open these out and if I open this one out, put these together, then I can press that just like that. And then we have our little, our little V-neck, all nice and precise. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stay stitch the snip end uh, about an inch, inch and a half on this side and about an inch and an inch and a half on this side. Uh, just regular straight stitch and that's going to keep it all firm and nice together so it doesn't slip around. Okay now that we've got the neckband all sorted out we are going to work on the front bodice. So we're just doing, going to do a couple of things here to make sure that we can have really great success at getting our v-neck. One of the first things we're going to do is mark the center front and we need to be able to mark it down a little bit. So I usually do that by just folding it in half and uh, giving it a press. So I'll fold it in half and just press it down right here. All right. All right. Here's my actual little sneaky trick on how to get this really nice point of your V. We're gonna put a little piece of iron-on interfacing right here in the middle. That's what our little scrap is for. So any little thing, just I use just, just cut a tiny piece. It could even be something as small as this. A little square. And we're just gonna set it right here and press it down. We're going to gently press with the iron and then go back and trim the inside off and then give it a really good press. Okay. So just get your little piece of interfacing in there. That's going to help us when we get ready to clip this and keep it from stretching out. And I'm going to take my trusty straight pin that I said we needed to have. And now I'm going to put a pin right up here through the middle. I can see where I've ironed it. And I'm going to weave this pin in and out so that it can't slip out. 
coming out right smack dab there at the top and I'm straight up and down. It's when we get wobbly because it's hard to tell sometimes where that center is, where we think it is. So we might pin a little bit over here or get a little bit over here and just a tiniest bit off. Um, we'll make it so that we don't have a great neckline. So again, we're gonna pin it right in the middle, right where we've marked. I'm gonna weave that pin in and out so it can't move. Straighten that out. So there we go, we've got our center marked really nice. Now I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and do some stay stitching. I'm gonna stay stitch just inside 3 eighths of an inch, about an inch and a half up here maybe, to the middle, and then over. Uh, you can go from the center out both times on these super slippery fabrics, that works the best because then nothing gets distorted as you go around the corner. Sometimes we come around here and it'll pull and then we come around here and you get a little curve in there. So if the fabric is super slippery, and even if it's not, sometimes it's best to go 3 8 inch from here to here and then from here to here. All right, I have actually taken the bodice now and I've done my stay stitching right here. I have clipped into the center and uh, I've sewn the shoulder seam, so I have front and back together. I've marked my quarter points. Um, and you guys remember how to do that by putting the front and back together, holding this out here and finding where your quarter point is. I actually make little clips, snips into the fabric. That's how I mark mine. Uh, I've got my band here that I've done. Uh, it's stay stitched all as well, together just right here in the front just a little bit. And I've also done my markings on it. And I'm ready to get the front on. So take a look and see which side of the band you like best. I've matched my stripes just a little bit better on this side, I think, than on this side. <laughs> so I got one off just a tiny bit on this bottom too. So I'm actually gonna use this as the right side, so right sides together. And here's how we get that really nice point. I've got my stay stitching here, and because I've got the black side of the thread up, it's hard for you to see, but I can see it. I'm gonna put the pin right through. And I'm gonna look here on the back and make sure I'm coming out in the center. And I'm a tiny bit off. This is super important, so take your time to get that pin right in there. So it's gone through both center lines of your fabric. See that? Then I'm going to take my bodice top, and I'm gonna take my pin, and I'm gonna put it right in this point where this um, stitching is, okay? Then it's down in the back. You can see, maybe you can see. Where my straight line is right there. You can see my straight line right there? Check mark. So I've got to go back down through that straight line and back up through the middle of my band. And then I'm going to peek over here and make sure I'm in the middle. Oh, it looks like I did pretty good. So it's really important just to make sure you have everything in the middle of everything and that you start your pin on this stitching line that you did and on this stitching line that you did. If you could drop that pin right there in the middle, you're gonna be great. All right, so here's what it looks like from this side. And then if I just let the fabric do its thing without stretching or anything else, I'm just turning this so that these edges meet. I'm gonna make sure I pull this bodice fabric out of the way. I'm gonna pin here. Band. Just going to turn it till it meets. No stretching, no anything. Just it lays right in there. I think we have a tendency to want to stretch it, that kind of thing, but nope, no stretching. Just turn it till it meets it. Put a pin in. See, this basically comes across straight. And what's going to happen is we're going to go over to the machine and I'm going to stitch and if I'm stitching right on it I'm going to stitch right up to here and then I'm going to pivot and I'll stitch right down to here and we'll just work at keeping this fabric out of the way. All right let's sew this thing on. 
So I've got it all lined up. Um, I'm on the 3 8 inch line. I pin it out here and I'm gonna sew about the same distance that I stay stitched. So it's about an inch, inch and a half. And I'm gonna sew right to this little center point right here. I'm really, all right, and then we're gonna pivot. And see how this can get bunched up? Because I know a lot of times this is where we get a little bit of that bunchy stuff at the point of the V. Just lift, once you've pivoted, lift up your presser foot and just smooth. See how I can pull those kind of off to the back and the side and just smooth everything down. So it's nice and smooth on my 3 8 mark. I'm gonna take that pin out. I'm ready to go on this side. All right, so now we can see how it looks. Oh, that looks good. Everything looks like it's lined up really nice. Now the next thing I'm gonna share with you is on uh, stripes to get a really neat stripe band. I'm actually gonna sew to the stripes as opposed to sewing the seam allowance, just like we did when we cut it out. So I'm gonna choose this white stripe right here. It uh, seems to be the closest. So I'm gonna go back and when I sew this now for, for real, I'm actually going to sew around and I'm gonna follow that, that white stripe on the back so that my neckband is gonna end up equal on the, see like that, equal on the stripes all the way around. So I'm gonna go pin this on, sew me a neckband. Here we've got it. We've got our neckband all put on. It's, it's pretty good, I think. That's a little off, like right up in here, but you know, it's knit, it stretches, it moves, it's not perfect. <laughs> so I think this is about as good as it gets. You can see that we're nice and even right here in the front. Um, so again, we'll go over a couple of things that we did. We made sure that we marked the center line uh, more than just a clip at the top so that we were never wonky. We pinned like crazy. Uh, we made sure that we stay stitched both our neckline about this far and our band. Um, we sewed, we were careful to keep all the material moving out of the way uh, as we came around the corner. One thing you can do is um, instead of coming down and turning the corner like I did, you can also sew from the center out. So you can actually start, put your needle down here, sew this direction, put your needle down here and sew this direction. That works especially well um, if you're getting rounded necklines, if part of your neckline is round, it's probably because you're putting more pressure on one side than the other. So that works really well to do that. Um, let's see, what else did we do? We sewed to the stripes. Um, if we were just sewing the regular neckline, we would just sew the normal seam allowance. I have already, searched mine around. I wanted to show you how I do this. When I get ready to finish my necklines, I actually start uh, at this side and sew all the way around and finish on the other end at the point so I don't try to go around this at all. But there you go. Now it's ready to top stitch in whichever way you choose. The nice thing about v-necks is they're generous in size and so you do not have to use a twin needle or a zigzag stitch, lightning stitch, anything that stretches. Um, a regular straight stitch, maybe with the stitch length uh, lengthened out a little bit, I usually use about a three on my machine, um, will work just fine to top stitch around here. Uh, just always again making sure, and I'll actually probably put another pin back in here, just to remind myself of where that center line is so that when I top stitch down, I'm not guessing I'm going to top stitch to here and pivot and top stitch back. That's going to help keep that really nice nice point. I hope these were really great tips for you. So now that my neckband is on, I'm ready to finish the rest of the shirt. Okay, now that we've got the neckband all finished, let's see how it looks. <laughs> well, here it is. What do you think about our neckband? I think we did pretty good. It's nice and straight. It's nice and straight in the middle. Remember, we marked that middle. We kept it marked well so that everything was always right in the center. We cut our stripes to the stripes and uh, sewed to the stripes. And then we made sure that we stay stitched uh, about this far on both sides so that um, the band didn't get wonky one way or the other. And also we used that little piece of interfacing to keep our bodice from stretching out. Thanks for hanging out with me while we sew v next today. I know I really enjoyed making this video with Love Notions. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I hope you do. Uh, you can just click the button down there at the bottom and uh, they've got a lot of great content in here. I'm Noreen, you can find me over at the uh, Love Notions Pattern Support page, so I'll be next like crazy. <laughs> no.
Yeah, you can too. See you later.